In this lecture, we focus on the Poincare-Bendixson theorem. We now outline a method that allows us to establish that closed orbits exist in some systems. So we now state the theorem. Suppose that number one, R is a closed and bounded subset of the plane. Number two, x dot is equal to f of x is a continuously differentiable vector field on an open set containing R. Number three, R does not contain any fixed points. And number four, there exists a trajectory C that is confined in R in the sense that it starts in R and stays in R for all time. Now let's plot a figure and visualize some of this. R is drawn as a ring shaped region because any closed orbit must encircle a fixed point denoted as P in the above figure and no fixed points are allowed in R. Then either C is a closed orbit or it spirals towards a closed orbit as t tends to infinity. In either case, R contains a closed orbit as shown in red in the figure. In the theorem, usually conditions 1, 2 and 3 are relatively easy to satisfy but condition 4 is actually difficult to satisfy. So how can one really be sure that a closed trajectory C actually exists? A standard way is to construct a trapping region R i.e. a closed connected set such that the vector fields point inward everywhere on the boundary R. Now let's plot a figure to visualize this. Then all the trajectories in R are confined. If we also arrange that there are no fixed points in R, then the Poincare Bendixson theorem ensures that R is a closed orbit. In practice, however, the Poincare Bendixson theorem can be quite tricky to apply. So we consider an example. There is a fundamental biochemical process called glycolysis where living cells obtain energy by breaking down sugar. In yeast cells as well as in yeast or muscle extracts Glycolysis can proceed in an oscillatory fashion. A simple model for these oscillations in dimensionless form is x dot is equal to minus x plus ay plus x square y and y dot is equal to b minus ay minus x squared y where x 
is the concentration of ADP which is adenosine diphosphate and Y is the concentration of F6P which is fructose 6-phosphate where A and B greater than 0 are kinetic parameters. The objective is to construct a trapping region for this particular system. So now we work towards its solution. We first identify the bulk lines. Now x dot is equal to 0 on the curve yields y is equal to x divided by a plus x square and y dot is equal to 0 on the curve yields y is equal to b divided by a plus x square. So by definition the arrows are vertical on the x dot is equal to 0 null line and the arrows are horizontal on the y dot is equal to 0 null line. Also note that the direction of the flow is determined by the signs of x dot and y dot. So for example in the region above both the null lines, the equations imply x dot is greater than 0 and y dot is less than 0 and so the arrows point down and to the right. So armed with this information we draw a figure to visualize this. So now let's go ahead and construct a trapping region. So the figure that we draw now will be an attempt to construct a trapping region. So the claim is that the region bounded by the dashed line is in fact a trapping region. To verify this, we have to show that all the vectors on the boundary in fact point into the box. The vectors on the horizontal and the vertical sides are justified from the bottom figure. But we have to think carefully about the diagonal line of slope minus 1 from the point B, B on A to the bulk line Y is equal to X divided by A plus X square. Let's develop some intuition now. So consider x dot and y dot in the limit of very large x. So x dot is approximately x square y and y dot is approximately minus x square y. So y dot divided by x dot is approximately minus 1. So the vector field at large x is approximately parallel to the diagonal line. So we should compare the sizes of x dot and minus y dot for sufficiently large x. So consider x dot minus minus y dot which is equal to minus x plus a y 
plus x square y plus b minus a y minus x square y which is equal to b minus x. So minus y dot is greater than x dot if x is greater than b. The inequality implies that the vector field points inwards on the diagonal line as dy dx is more negative than minus 1 and so the vectors are steeper than the diagonal line and thus the region is in fact a trapping region. The issue is that there is a fixed point inside the trapping region which is at the intersection of the null lines. So the conditions of the poincare bendixson theorem are not satisfied. However, if the fixed point is a repeller, then one can prove the existence of a closed orbit and we can construct a region around the fixed point. Now this can be visualized in the following figure. Note that the repeller drives all the neighboring trajectories into the shaded region. And as the shaded region is free of fixed points, the Poincare Bendixson theorem actually applies. Now we need to find conditions under which the fixed point is actually a repeller. Recall that the equations are x dot is equal to minus x plus a y plus x square y and y dot is equal to b minus a y minus x square y. The Jacobian of this system is a is equal to minus 1 plus 2xy a plus x square minus 2xy minus a plus x square and the fixed point is x star is equal to b and y star is equal to b divided by a plus b square. The determinant of the system delta is equal to a plus b square which is greater than 0 and the trace tau is equal to minus of b to the 4 plus 2a minus 1 times b square plus a plus a square divided by a plus b square. And so the fixed point is in fact unstable for tau greater than 0 and will be stable for tau less than 0. The dividing line tau is equal to 0 occurs when b square is equal to 1 half times 1 minus 2a plus or minus 1 minus 8a square root. 
and this defines a curve in the A B space. So for parameters in the region corresponding to tau greater than 0 that is where the fixed point is unstable the system has a closed orbit. So can we actually get chaos in the phase plane? And the short answer is no. The Poincare Bendixson theorem says that if a trajectory is confined to a closed bounded region that contains no fixed points, then the trajectory must eventually approach a closed orbit. In essence, nothing more complicated is possible. The result is only applicable in two dimensions. In higher dimensional systems, i.e. n greater than or equal to 3, the Poincare Bendixson theorem in fact no longer applies. In fact, in n greater than or equal to 3, the trajectories can roam around forever in a bounded region without actually settling to a fixed point or a closed orbit. So essentially the Poincare Bendixson theorem implies that chaos can never occur in the phase plane. Now closed orbits are very important objects scientifically. And they occur in numerous models in science and engineering, uh, especially in places where we actually have models which exhibit self-sustained oscillations. So it's important to have methods which allow us to talk about the existence of such closed orbits. And the poincare bendixson theorem is an important result in nonlinear dynamics in this direction. Essentially, what the poincare bendixson theorem tells us is the following. Let's assume we have a closed bounded region. Inside that region, we do not have a fixed point. But we have a trajectory which starts inside this region. Then this trajectory has to eventually approach a closed orbit. This result is only applicable in two dimensions. So if you're looking at higher dimensional systems, for example, dimensions three or higher, then you can be a trajectory which starts within a closed bounded region but you do not have to hit a fixed point or approach a closed orbit but you can actually keep moving on randomly or chaotically forever. So essentially what this says is that this form of random or chaotic behavior cannot actually happen in two dimensions but can happen in dimensions 3 or higher and in particular the key result that, or one key takeaway from the Poincare Bendixson theorem is that such chaotic phenomena will not happen in two dimensions.